Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another beginner guitar lesson. And what I want to talk about today, as we expand on the intervals and also power chords, I want to go through the major scale pattern as the foundation for your understanding of intervals as they pertain to the root note of the major scale and then also go through and name some of the more popular intervals that can actually be used as power chord variations okay so the first step to this will be to review the major scale and then go through and name the popular intervals and give you the power chord name and maybe a little bit on the function of each power chord variation so we're going to start on 6-5, which is, of course, A. All right. That is A right there. Now, I'm going to do the A major scale. I do have a video lesson on the major scale, so if you're confused, maybe you should stop and go back and seek out that video in the playlist for the beginner, beginner guitar lessons. Here we go. We have A, B... C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, and A. Now up on the screen I have the scale in letter form. I should also put up the scale in tab form as well. Okay? So you can see what I just played. In relation to the guitar itself and you also know what letters were played on what note so with that said what I want to do is go through the scale and I'm going to be pulling notes from the scale itself as well as the notes that are not in the scale okay and some of them will be more popular than others some of them won't be used at all okay starting on the A again as the root what we're going to do is just revisit the traditional power chord, okay? Which is just that. It's the root and the fifth of the scale, all right? And if you ever see in chord symbols a letter like A5 or any letter with a 5 after it, that is implying power chord. And the reason we call it 5 is because the chord is just simply the root note with its fifth, right? The note five away, five to scale degrees away from the root, so A5. So we're naming the chord from the highest degree of the scale used. All right, so that is your most common version of the power chord, but there are other versions, and I want to go through them now, starting with the next in line from the root being the minor third. Okay, now specifically we're dealing with the A and the C. Alright, the A is located on 6-5 while the C is located on 5-3. It almost looks like an inverted power chord, right? Because the traditional power chord looks like that, but this power chord looks like that, all right? So what you're going to do is play those two notes together. Now, not, not only are you learning the interval of a minor third by doing this, but you're also getting the sound of the minor third, all right? And you're getting the shape that you can then memorize and use in the future, all right? The next interval off the root is the major third, which is much brighter. You can hear that lift. Your minor third is very depressed, right? But your major third, very happy. Happy, bright, and upbeat. So that is going to be right here, okay? We got that original A root note, and then your major third. All right. The next variation, moving up by a half step from the major third, we have what's called the perfect fourth or the fourth. And that is a very 
harmonious sound, but it doesn't indicate major or minor. In order for a chord to indicate major or minor, it must contain a third. And this chord is nothing but the root and the fourth of the scale, making it a perfect fourth. Not a major fourth, not a minor fourth, a perfect fourth, okay? So there's that. Let me give you an up close and personal on that one, all right? So you got your five, four, and your six, I'm sorry, your five, five, and your six, five right there. So they're stacked on that same fret. The next one, if we move up yet another half step, we're going to get to what's called the this one has a few names, depending on the direction. If you're coming from the fourth, you're going to call it an augmented fourth, because your augmented is to raise by a half step. If you're coming from the fifth and going down, if you're descending, we're going to call it what's called the diminished fifth, or the flat five. The other name for this is the tritone. The tritone is the foundation for the five chord in music, and we'll get into this in the future with examples and a more in-depth explanation, but just know that that augmented fourth, also known as flat five, also known as the diminished, tri the, I'm sorry, the diminished interval, or, um, excuse me, diminished fifth, or the tritone. Okay, like I said, this is the, the basis for the five chord in music, the dominant chord. It's, it also splits the musical octave in half, okay? So, it's very dissonant in sound. It's very unstable. Some would say it's just downright evil, all right? Great for heavy metal and anything that you want to make a little bit darker, a little bit more mysterious. So that, that shape is kind of the opposite of your major third shape. Here's your major third, all right? So you have that diagonal shape going down, but this one is a diagonal shape going up. So this is your tritone shape, all right? We have two more to go. Actually, we have three more to go. The next one is the traditional power chord, root fifth. We just did that at the beginning. I'm going to skip over that. Followed by one of the more uncomfortable shapes. This one is the sharp five or augmented five. So if you wanted to give the augmented feel to a power chord, you would choose this. And it's just one, met, one, um, one fret above the fifth. There's your fifth. Perfect consonants, one fret higher. You get a little bit of unstable. It's not as ugly as that tritone, but it's still pushing the limits of the uh, the comfort zone a little bit. And that looks like that, all right? So here's your original root, and then right here on 5-8 is your sharp 5 or augmented 5. All right, we have one more for you. We have what's called the octave. And the octave is nothing but the root played above the the octave. So in other words, when you play your scale, you have your root, you have all the scale notes after the root, and then right there, there's your octave. Anytime you hear the word octave, you're going to think a full scale's length apart, but being the same note. So the root and the octave are both A's, which is why they have that similar sound just an octave apart, so there's space apart. Just think of a ladder, top of the ladder, bottom of the ladder, right? What's really cool about this shape is that if you wanna play just one note, but have it be bigger than just going, right? I mean, there is a time and a place to do that, but you can play the root and the octave together and then strum those three strings. bigger octave sound. The secret to that is though, however, you are playing the fifth string. And if you're playing the fifth string, you're adding in a note that shouldn't be there. But what's cool is if you push down just right on that sixth string, 
you can notice that your pointer finger right there is touching on the A string to mute it. So you can strum away as hard as you want on those strings 6, 5, and 4. And you're only going to get the sound of the root in the octave because that ring or that pointer finger is just grazing that A string to keep it quiet. You don't want to push down on it, you just want to mute it. So there you have it guys, the major scale, the intervals thereof, all dissected in power chord format. And again, you can use these power chords in your writing, especially if you're into heavy metal. This is a great basis for coming up with interesting intervallic relationships because a lot of metal kind of avoids the big open chords because of distortion and lower tunings, it just gets muddy. So doing two to three note combinations like we've discussed here, whether it's the minor third, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, or the augmented fifth or sharp fifth, right? All those give a different color in relation to the root note, and they offer you heavy metal options, right? Heavy metal and hard rock options for color and different styles and different feels and moods. So again, use these in your playing, use them in your writing, but I also want, I need you to internalize the intervallic name given to each of those combinations because those intervallic names will go further down the line when describing other scales and other types of chords. So everything is linked and related together which is why I'm trying to do these videos from the foundation up because I want people to have as few questions as possible assuming you start from the beginning and go until this series ends which God knows when will that God knows when that'll be because I'm just chock full of ideas. So, as always, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you have any requests for specific things that I haven't talked about yet, let me hear them. I'll put them on a list. I'll get to them when I can. Thank you for watching, and happy practicing.